Ashley Dallas won the golden guitar this year for female artist of the year. It was a very popular win because I was there and I could feel everyone in the room being very happy about it. Um, she has recently released her wonderful and fifth album in the moment. And we're going to chat about that and maybe golden guitars. Hello, Ashley. Hello, Sophie. Thank you for having me on again. It's always nice to chat. Well, I'm very happy to talk about <laughs> talk about this wonderful album but I'm going to start by saying belatedly congratulations on your golden guitar and you actually won two that night the other was for uh the the video for Long Way Around which you recorded with Luke O'Shea Shea. I'm stumbling over my words um Jay Shiasini was the director for that video so he won it too now I interviewed Luke the other night and he said he prepared the choreography for that video but what he hadn't prepared was to sing and dance at the same time. So he said he had to rely on you for that because you were able to do it with no problem. <laughs> <laughs> I can hands down say that that is a true story and sentiment from Luke. <laughs> I, I still, look, that day, um, that whole song was just from recording the vocals to then getting on set and doing the video clip and then every time we played it live but I look I can just shut my eyes and it's 5 30 a.m on the first hill in Nundal that we did the first take and I can see Luke standing there next to me and he's like you got this kid and I'm like yeah I'm feeling good this is gonna be a good day and then he goes have you ever sung and danced before like at the same time and I went yeah at, at line dance events I often sing and dance at a line dance event he goes oh I haven't should have I practiced <laughs> and that is when I knew this is going to be a fun day <laughs> <laughs> Yes, especially because Luke, you know, you came up with the choreography. <laughs> like well, look, and I still I still call for this and I, I'm still half tempted to do it. I think, and I did say, I made the joke, if we were lucky enough to win the Golden Guitar Award, I believe that we should make the bloopers video of all the times that one went the other way while one went forward um, and make a tally of who who went which way, wrong way the most. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I can believe that but where is that bloopers video you won the golden guitar we <laughs> see I've threatened it I think I should just do it without Luke knowing <laughs> now I've just I'm told sure. everyone <laughs> I'm sure Jay's got the footage somewhere around should be easy oh, enough he would well 50 different locations I think we shot throughout that day um and and again like we had the choreography and the plan of doing it in as many different locations but it was just a day where we got in the car we got in Luke's car all together all three of us and we just drove and went oh that feels right oh that looks nice that's taken our eye everything was just such a natural progression of the day um mm. and and I was just so overwhelmed and so joyed that we were able to win that together as a collaborative team and um it's just again every time I go out and I'm connecting with audiences they say oh that song long way around and we watch the video clip every week because it just makes us feel good and I think that's such a key to music and it's so cool that the industry also recognized that with that song and um and we got gold which was awesome you did and Luke did look like he was moving okay towards the end of it so <laughs> Look, I keep, look, I think Luke has his own, everyone's got their own style of dancing. And <laughs> I think the essence is that Luke has found his and he's played to the strength. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But as you said, that was a collaborative effort. Your Female Artist of the Year award was for you alone. And that is a highly competitive field every single year. Um, so, yeah, congratulations again. And how did you, well, I think it's, it's probably a bit trite to say, how did you feel? Because, of course, it would have been overwhelming in the moment. Uh, it was incredibly overwhelming. And to be honest too, the weeks after it was that sense as well. And I think because um, the time that the awards rolled around with the postponed dates, I was quite heavily pregnant and only had four weeks to go <laughs> until um, Bub was coming. So we kind of left festival mode and then went into that family cocoon as well. And um but to to win female artists this year at the 50th as well, like there's just so much, um, look, every time I've been lucky enough to even be nominated, 
um, because these awards are our most prestigious event in in our industry. It's the nod. It's been something for myself that I've dreamt of since a little girl. Um, and my grandfather owned Golden Guitar Awards with his names on them. And I remember going to Pop's house and and reading them all the time and, and just asking questions about, about them and how do you do that and, and how much work did you do, Pop? So to win on the 50th year and to have that, you know, female artist of the year be read out with my name on it. It's it still it still makes my hair stand up a little bit. I'll be honest, um, because I just I do I take a lot of weight in that. I know um, at twenty nine I'm up to my fifth album. I know for me there's still a lot of music and a lot of miles to cover mm-hmm. and a lot of audiences to reach. But to to get that um, recognition this year. Um, it was just incredible, to be honest. And I feel very, very proud and privileged as well to to be amongst those names. Well, I think you absolutely deserve to be amongst those names and you will likely be up for it again because, of course, the album is out and there are awards next year. So, yeah, well, you never know. It's such a tough, it's so hard. I think the, it's a, that's why I always think, you know, and again, getting in that top five I every anytime I've got that top five recognition I I take that and go this is amazing um because even when I was standing up accepting this year it dawns on you as well you're standing there you've obviously got a lot of fans which is amazing and you can feel the warmth and the love but that whole bottom tier is is all your peers and your industry and it's also a lot of faces that don't even get in that top five who just as deservedly deserve to be there. Mm-hmm. Everyone's out there writing great music. It's their music. Everyone's doing their thing. And everyone does deserve that moment. So there's so many people that don't even get a recognition in the top five. So it's, it is tough. Yeah. Um, so this year, I don't know, I'm like, oh, we could be or we couldn't be um, <laughs> because the music that's coming out in Australia is it's a really exciting time for the Australian country music industry and the music industry in general. Yeah. Um, it's really lovely to see that the last few years as uh, stressful and as um, anxiety-driven they can be for the arts and this we're definitely not in the position that we were with the industry Mm -hmm. um, post-pandemic. But it's so nice to see that people have harnessed that in a creative way um, and the music and all the different styles that are coming out. But, you know, if if we're lucky enough to get up there, I'll I'll be doing the floss dance either way. (laughs) (laughs) Well, but what you said about the music coming out, yes, part of what I find so extraordinary is that you, some other artists, um, Melanie Dyer, Amber Lawrence, Adam Brand spring to mind have actually emerged from this period of time with your strongest work yet. And it's that always feel reticent about saying it because it sounds like, oh, I'm saying the previous albums weren't as good. <laughs> they were great, but it's amazing when you can keep getting better. And especially after this kind of period you've all been through to release such strong work is just phenomenal. Well, thank you. Well, and I know I feel that with this album um, in the moment. I, I feel it's cool because the last record I felt that was a step up from Lighthouse and um, so I, I'll worry the day that I go to release a record and I don't think it's something stronger than the last. I think that's the best thing as an artist is trying to keep growing um, and I know with my record in the moment I'm feeling that growth from me Um, and I think it's because I've welcomed it I think I started writing this album pretty soon after I had Harriet so 2019 I started the writing process and then put it on pause because I was trying to deal with being a new mum and and went whoa hang on (laughs) (laughs) my brain is just not going to cope right now (laughs) so 2020 um, we started to release singles in that back end but that's when I really wrote this record um and I and I'm excited to be be honest as well I know we've got this new album out but I've been writing continually as well and just working on that craft and working on the walls coming down each song just making sure that connecting to my story can connect to others is um you know I think that's my one of my favorite things of being a songwriter is that ability 
to have that power to write a story and write it personal and and then know that's going to reach somebody else out there and um and that's what excites me so much with this album is hearing what people are thinking and and how they're interpreting the songs and and how it's making them think of things and it's quite nice and refreshing that it has come from a time when it when the pandemic hit I went what am I what what am I doing who am I yeah yeah it's um when an album comes out do you feel maybe particularly with this album does it feel like a relief almost that you can let it go to other people that you can pass it on or do you have part of you that thinks "Ah, is it going to work are people going to respond look I think it's it's a healthy balance of all of those feelings um I think you always are naturally going to have that ah, what are people going to think kind of notion with anything you do? I think it's the same with any industry where you you build with, you know, I'm, I'm assuming if you build someone's house and dream home that you hope that everything is to their specifications and everyone loves it. So I think there's always that um, energy around it. But I do try and, and calm that down with with that belief again and, and know um because I went into these albums and and this one really and went in on that heart level and I knew each decision I made with this album resonated with me at the core Mm -hmm. I then know I'm ready that if if it didn't hit I was going to be okay with that because I felt like these songs uh, I was happy to share them and I'm really excited that I have let them go now to everybody but I knew that these songs were the best songs that I had at that time for this record. And I knew that the singing start, my singing, um, I, I found a growth with that. I wasn't in my head about worrying about melodies or, oh, should I just keep it like this? I just sang. Right. Um, and I, I really have to say, I think that that strength in my personality has come from Harriet in that sense um because she when she came in 2019 you know I I still had this notion with my personality where I was like everything I can handle this I'm good I'm great I'm fine and underneath on that duck going (laughs) (laughs) so and I think when Harriet came um and as a new mom I was like whoa this is like this is different and things didn't work as well with you know um feeding and all that stuff and I had to find my feet and I really got in my head and I had to just be verbal with it and say I'm not coping with things or I'm not Mm -hmm. feeling it and then that trickled into every facet that I I had it came with my music I just was so vulnerable and said to like you know my mum and dad who have always been supporters of my music and so lovely just going you know I'm, I, I feel pressure here I, I feel like I need help there mm-hmm. um, and I that's why I went into this process making this record just to really create and to just to feel everything and that's why it's called in the moment because I've really tried to live to that testament of being in the moment no matter what that moment is it can be chaotic yeah. that's okay um it can be the greatest moment like winning golden guitar awards or watching your kid walk for the first time and they're beautiful and then next minute it could be a massive meltdown because you cut a sandwich into squares and they should be triangles <laughs> <laughs> so i just think it's um it's so exciting now to have this out and to to let it go to people and and show them that I am now as an artist, I feel like I'm really arrived, if that right. also makes sense. Yeah, it, that, it does make sense. And it's also interesting because um, my impression of this album is that fundamentally it's about your very firm commitment to be the best person you can be. That's what I was hearing in the song. It's a record of you trying to make the most of every day, even if it's a bad day. That's what I thought. Yeah, it really, well, I'm glad that's come across because that's that's really these songs um, were written from that. You know, I shared Good and Bad Days as the first single for that reason because um, it was one of those things. You, you have good, you have bad days, and I'm always this smiley person and I love the positive things. I, I do get in funks, though, I'm not going to lie, and I've had to do my own types of um you know soul searching and getting over things and um counseling all that sort of stuff as well and um but with my family core 
that's who I rely on. And that's, you know, so good and bad days was that starting process. And I just ask people when they listen to this record, it is to be played track one to 10 because each song kind of interwine into the story of that progression um, because they all kind of fit into one another as a as a whole collective it's kind of like a chapter book in a way (laughs) which um which is all purposely done (laughs) oh yes album order is very important (laughs) so it's like yeah it's not just talking their songs into the air and see where they land no and I'm not like Adele of course level who can take the shuffle motion off 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 the streaming platform so (laughs) please just play track one to ten people the first time at least (laughs) I always find it outrageous that people would play an album on shuffle. Of course, the songs are in a particular order. <laughs> anyway. But some people do, and that's what, that's what they like to do. That's fine. But <laughs> I don't think it's fine, Ashley. It should be stopped anyway. But I think part of it also is, is there was that element, but then what I could also hear was you being quite hard on yourself um, and, and trying to reconcile those parts of, you know, wanting to be the best person you could be and being hard on yourself. But sometimes I think they're, parts of the whole like that's that that being a bit tough on yourself is actually what helps you create great art because it it pushes you yeah and look I I have always been pretty critical on myself um again I used to disguise it as a um as a thing that I didn't do it or Mm. I wasn't perfectionist or I didn't overthink um but I am I'm very much that um and it's only because I just want to create musically I just want to create the best music that I can and I'm always looking at trying to um develop that and learn and grow and then also as a person I know um you know you you kind of reflect I think that too and when I had Harriet as well and now I've got the two girls I think oh they, they look to you you're their first teacher in everything like you are uh, and I think about how I looked at my parents and um and I think wow like I I want to share vulnerability with these girls and I want them to know that you know I haven't done everything right in my in my journey with my life but everything I've done I'm trying to make better choices every day and trying to be a great human and kind to other people and I've learned from my things that I've made mistakes from and the things that often trip you up and make you fall give you stronger strength and stronger foundations um and so that's what some of these songs are about like spinning around in particular was that total message to myself of all of those things in my personality and and then again what brings um that balance back because I think as you said I think as an artist having those critical little moments makes you keep wanting to create better art but it's having that in a healthy way and for a long time I didn't have that in a healthy way um and now I do I've got my balance I found what my balance was and that's that spinning around notion was you know what keeps you spinning around what what makes your cup fill up and that's love that's that connection and I think that's a strong theme throughout the whole record as well is connecting with people and connection with one another because I think at the end of the day that's that's what I'm going to look back on as being the most treasured things in my life is how much I'm going to quote Mr Luke O'Shea how much have you loved um and I think that's that's what you leave that's your lasting impression yeah and even on the track couldn't keep up which is about losing people it is about that part of what's I find so interesting about that track is that acknowledgement in a way that 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 person's gone but they're not that it's it's like an ongoing relationship even though they're not physically present because you're still talking to them in that song yeah that was a real healing song for me um and it was a it's a heavy song in a sense because it is totally about losing someone unexpectedly um and in my case I lost them I lost two people quite quickly um one to the black dog unfortunately and then another one with an underlying condition that we didn't know about and with one in particular I was so close with this this friend as a teen and I we used to catch up all the time as a young adult having coffee and brunch dates whenever I was back home from tour and then you know natural progression with life and busy schedules and that separation happens and um and then it we kind of had rekindled it back to what it was but 
we never had those conversations that we needed as well to heal a few of those little things because we always thought we'd have time. Um, and I think that's caught out a lot of people as well. Um, and even when you do know someone is going, it doesn't make that last goodbye any easier either. So it's been really interesting to see that this song that I wrote totally in a space, I, it was a weird out of world experience, if I'll be honest with you, Sophie. I woke up in the middle of the night just because I couldn't sleep properly. I was, you know, upset with with that I was angry at myself I felt like oh, I should have said things to them and maybe I could have had better you know we could have caught up more etc mm. um and I was having these restless sleeps um that weren't disturbed from just at this stage it was just Harriet in our life so it was and she was sleeping normal right. um, so I got up at literally 3 a.m because I just was laying there going like in my head and I could he hear this melody and I thought, this isn't going to go away. I just need to go and write this song. And I went out to this space that I'm in now because um, it's the furthest away from the bedrooms. Mm -hmm. And I just sat with my pen and paper and it, I wrote it like a poem, couldn't keep up. And it was one of the quickest songs I've ever written. And I still feel like I had someone else. I still feel like I had my friend writing it with me. Mm -hmm. Um and I did the demo tape then and there. The next day I sent it to dad and I said, here's this song. I think it really needs to be recorded. I think someone else might feel the healing from that that I did. Um, and we released that obviously as one of the singles last year. And it was interesting. It took on its, I love when you release a song and then it takes on its own little journey with other people and then it becomes this bigger thing. Because when we release that, it was in that height too where with COVID lockdowns and all the state borders, people weren't even able to get back to interstate funerals for their loved ones. Right. So I was then getting all of these messages of how they were using couldn't keep up as the song because mm. they couldn't get over to say goodbye or they knew they wanted to obviously be there and but they couldn't get across borders. So it then became this totally different song as well for other people which is just the power of, of music um and then and there so yeah it's, take, it's beautiful that one and also the power of trusting your own instincts as a creator to know that there was something that that had to get out there because you could have you could have written it in the middle of the night done the demo and then thought oh I'll hang on to it but you send it to your father who is your producer and and left it with him from that point um I guess to make a decision but he was obviously never going to say no 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 uh, look dad and I um dad I just think dad's amazing at what he does he's got such a craft as a musician and and he always treats um when he goes into the studio the music has to he said it has to be a blanket it has to wrap around the the lyric content and and comfort it and I, I think that's beautiful but when it comes down to the song choices he he and I we're pretty similar on what we think should go on the record and then there's songs that often we can disagree on and I, I must admit I, I kind of then pull it come on dad <laughs> <laughs> it is my album <laughs> yeah, I, I've, I've said that <laughs> my name on it <laughs> but it's funny and it's a, but once then we get into that creative mode and and he gets in there and he can hear them the song he he knows it's exactly the right choices um but musicality he took he took all these songs to a beautiful spaces I think as well I talk about my growth but I think dad and I have grown together with our sound as well from our albums. Um, and this one is, I just, yeah, look, I can't thank my dad enough for the work that he's done on this. Well, I imagine he'd feel he's lucky to work with you because you probably give him, well, you would trust him more than any other artist would, I would think. And that's not only because he's your father, it's because you've been playing with him since you were a child. So for him as a producer, there's a certain treat in that, I would imagine, to have an artist he can... You can play around with things and, you know, you'll, you'll be receptive and you can have frank conversations about them. Yeah, look, I'd like to think he thinks he's pretty lucky. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure he does. <laughs> but, um, look, it, I absolutely treasure the, the bond and the relationship that Dad and I have. Um, and I think it comes down to, like, we're very close as 
father and daughter um, and we love, you know, just sitting down and having coffee and talking absolute garbage. <laughs> but when we get into the studio, uh, it's like, uh, it's such a respectful place too. Right. Um, which is really lovely. And and I love now that dad, yeah, dad is experimenting with different things and he's seen my songwriting change as well and, and develop. And um, instead of both of us going, no, you got to stay like, we respectfully work and flow with each other, which is really lovely. And, and the work that, like dad's guitar work on this record, I just, I remember going down and, and listening to stuff because um, part of this record was when we first tracked it down then it came into that part where we weren't allowed to. Our restrictions here were uh, a five-kilometre radius. Yeah, right. And that's and not much in a, in a country town, really. That doesn't get no. you too many places. And, and there was this thing where, you know, unless you were going from work, but you could work from home and all of that. But there became this grey area because I'm like, well, I'm going to our home studio, which is at my mum and dad's house. But the neighbours might just think I'm coming here to catch up. Like, I'm oh, yeah. like, really like, oh, I don't want to get in any trouble. <laughs> so even we didn't see each other for a few weeks in that period. So Dad would go in and just totally create on his end. So when I went down and listened to some of the stuff that Dad did, I was just like, oh, like, wow. Like, what zone were you in when you sat in here? Um, and I just think it's amazing. I, yeah. Go, Brett. Go, Brett Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> now, you talked about, you know, writing couldn't keep up in the middle of the night and, and your songwriting process in general. You now have two small children to look after. You're running a household. You've got all sorts of other things to do. What is your process like? Or you, is it just you grab the snatches, the, the bits of time you, when you can? Look, I um, I like to grab any times that I can and feel, but I, I as a personal writer, um, you know, I obviously struggle sometimes to sit down and, and write if I'm not feeling it. Mm -hmm. And I and I learned that a few years ago that I can't just sit down and, and try and come on, let's write for this. I don't like writing for things um, because I feel like that puts pressure on it. And then I'm writing songs that aren't necessarily um, resonating here. Um I am very thankful last year I joined Sam Hawksley's song club yeah. and I was so thankful for that experience because it taught me a lot about myself as a writer and it made me realise um, that I can, I can, it made me realise a few things. It made me realise I can write a song very quickly for a deadline. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> as to where that song ends up, I'm not sure. But um it made me realize about my writing and um and I just used that as well, knowing that this year was gonna be again finding my feet with two kids, etc. So that's helped me now that Lillian's here as well and Harriet. Um and I just I'm constantly writing any ideas down in my in my phone, but I am a book and paper person. I I love that feeling. So and Kiwi, my hobby, knows that that's kind of like my gym session is going out to the music room and just sitting playing guitar. Right. Um, and that's kind of how these so songs and the new ones that I'm writing now are happening. I'm just coming out here and I'm just sitting playing a couple of my favourite songs or getting lost in music. And then I'm like, oh, I want to explore that idea I had the other day and just letting it really happen quite naturally. Yeah. Is it a sense of... of sort of always having the channel open, I guess, always being in creative flow so that, that or I guess for you too, because having grown up with music, that's, that's who you are. Like this is so, so much a, a part of your metal um, to, to be like this. Yeah, I feel like my creative brain doesn't switch off too often. I I have to go to certain places to fully switch that off. <laughs> okay. And I have to often go without any, any source of musical instrument. Yeah, right um uh, but I do feel like it's always flowing I feel like my antennas are always up and grabbing ideas whether I'm, I write them then and there I always make a note of like that as an idea especially if it's a, a hook line or a, a title but um I, it's it, as you said though music has just been what I've been around um and I really felt the weight of that environment 
this year at the Golden Guitar Awards and that week of festival, mm-hmm. seeing it through my daughter's eyes. Right. Because it just took me back to seeing all those videos and pictures of me at that age. And, you know, I look back on the family scrapbooks at that and I'm, I'm asking, like I'd ask questions as a teen going like, oh, was I like, was I that into it then? And they're like, yeah, you were just, you were just there. Like um, my brother plays and he played on the album, but my brother didn't want to learn bass until he got to high school. Like that was his total thing and my mum and dad were both like with when they had the kids us kids they went you know if they want to progress into music if they want to be on stage with with dad we'll let that if they don't they don't like that's Mm -hmm. that's it we're not pushing either way so my brother didn't learn the bass guitar um until high school that he uh, actively asked to do so whereas I was that person on stage from like two just tugging and wanting to be on the microphone and and talking and reciting poetry and then I started fiddle when I was six because I I was asking to play the fiddle so I'd look back on family photos and be like like this age and I now get it with Harriet and that's that whole thing at festival um in Tamworth especially I think being hometown week Mm -hmm. um and the lead up to the awards and all that stuff and Harriet's excitement and just, I want to sing on stage, mum. When, when it's, when's it your gig? I want to sing. And I felt, I was like, that's where this love came from. It just happened here. And I know no different. I just, um, and it's funny, I've tried other things. I've dabbled in um, other retail jobs. I have, I'm a fully qualified hairdresser. Um, and I loved all of those roles, but I felt like I was performing more in those jobs than I do with my music yeah right and with writing it's just second like I sit down and I just love it I just love writing I just love that whole that I love the ability that you can sit down and you can craft a song and it's it's there and I just think that's amazing and I think it's even better that I can share it with other people yeah Um, but Ash would share it with no like or just if no one was listening I'd still be sitting here writing music (laughs) well of course if Harriet does pick up an instrument she will be the fourth generation of Dallas to do so yeah it is amazing to see like it's we've again I just finished uh, we just got home from a few gigs up in Brisbane and the Ipswich area and I was hosting um, a travel group as well to CMC but um, we did a few little side shows as well with that Um, and Harriet actually got up and sang Good and Bad Days with me. Oh, wow. And it was that same thing. She was in our car trip the whole time. Um, the lead up before we went, she was at preschool telling them that she was off to a festival. Um, mummy wasn't, she was very thick. She was like, mummy's not playing the festival. Mummy's playing a different show. But I might sing at mummy's show. And she did a performance at the preschool practising and, and I said to Kiwi, I said, same thing. Like, if, if she wants to get up and sing, I'm not going to stop her. Like, that's that's her wanting to express herself and, and sing. That's that's great. If she doesn't, that's great too. If she just wants to be, like, whatever she's doing, well, no, we got to my gig and we talked in the car. I said, oh, what song would you sing? And at first she said my her own song. <laughs> Right. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's happening already. And then she agreed that she would sing Good and Bad Days. And I said, well, if you don't feel like it, that's okay. I won't say anything. I'll just say the song and you give me a thumbs up. Well, I said the song and she gave me a thumbs up and come running down the crowd. And she sang the entire two verses, the, all the choruses and and loved it. Um. <laughs> And then got and got tips. <laughs> Even better, making money already. Oh, but it, oh, it was very funny too. She, she, we went afterwards. I had to buy her a wallet. She asked if I could buy her a wallet, and I asked her why, and she said that's just to put all my money that I all these tips in because she she never heard the word tips until till this tips was what you played in the playground. Yeah. And um, I was like, okay, so we buy you a wallet. She said, yeah, and I put these in here 
to, and then we take them to the bank when we go into town. <laughs> well, and then there you go. She's even got a solid financial head on her shoulders. <laughs> She's much better at business than I am. <laughs> well, that's right. Three and a half. Well, and if Lillian follows in her footsteps, you can just have a whole opening app. <laughs> Well, that's that's very true. It's um, but it's really love again. It's just that whole, um, I just want to create that space for them. If it's if that's what they naturally fall in love with, um, then that's what they do, and we'll support it. But if it's not, that's that's fine too. But you know, for me, I couldn't imagine myself doing anything different. And I thought what my family business was the coolest thing ever. So um, I'm glad to be be making my own footsteps in it now well as a fan of your music I'm very glad that you chose this path that was predestined for you somewhat (laughs) Um, and I am talking to you quite late at night you've had a long day looking after those lovely young children so I should let you go but Ashley Dallas in the moment is the album it is wonderful Um, new fans old fans alike I'm sure will love it so thank you very much for talking to me about it oh no thank you and I just again everyone out there watching and listening so thanks so much for for appreciating the new music and and it's um if you listen to the last track all the way to the end you might hear a beautiful little voice pipe up and say something um which is a very poignant question of what's the next song and that's just to say because the music is coming it's just we're just going to keep flowing with music um so, yeah, but thank you very much for talking with us again and, and I hope everyone does like this new album and, and the growth and um, connects to these songs. Thank you, Ashley. Take care, everybody. <laughs>